Hey guys, Jake here. I am back out at the IAT overpass that's been put in for the mule deer migration. I was out here back in February. Uh, I got a call saying that the deer had started to move. I came out and got caught out in a, a snowstorm and wasn't able to film. Well, I'm back now for the fall migration. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna put some GoPros on the overpass to try and film the deer as they come over, as well as filming from the ridge back here. Now, what's so important about putting out uh, remote cameras is that you do some observations and you understand the movement of the wildlife, their behavior. If you have no understanding of how they're gonna move, then putting a, a GoPro on this overpass is gonna be really hit and miss to try and get them to come close to it. These have such a wide viewing angle that you really have to walk past it or a wildlife has to walk past it within a few feet to get them to fill the frame. If they're six or seven feet out or further, then they're gonna be really small on screen. So it's really important to try and observe the wildlife, understand their movements, so that when you put your cameras in, you're gonna get the best shot that you can possibly get. Now I've been filming this, um, this is my fourth time out here. I filmed last fall, I filmed in the spring, and I'm back now to film this fall. And this is gonna be the first time that I'm actually gonna get footage of them coming over the overpass. Now, over the last few days, having filmed a few groups, I've learned that they're really using the right-hand side of the overpass. And when you look at the terrain, it kind of makes sense as to where they come down the ridge line at the back here. They come over and they see the ridges in front of them and they're using the right-hand side. It's kind of a natural path over to where they want to go. So I know that I want to place my cameras more to the right hand side of the overpass and so i'm going to jump up there and just show you how wide this thing is and why it's so hard to place these i'm up on top of the overpass and you can see this thing is vast it's about 50 meters 50 yards approximately wide from fence to fence so you can see in the background here how wide it looks just on the the phone screen here so imagine when deer come down there if the camera is off to one side, they're just gonna be tiny spots moving on the side of the, uh, the frame. Now, having spent some time, as I said, over on the ridgeline filming, I know that they're using this side more. And now coming up here, I can also see tracks. And tracks mainly coming down on the, the top here uh, where they've seeded. And you can see where they've kicked the, uh, the seed materials up. And it's looking to be, as I say, kind of between the halfway mark and this right-hand fence as you're coming down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set two cameras up. I'm gonna put one almost in the middle and I'm gonna face it slightly off to the right-hand side. And so with that camera placed like that, if they're coming down on the right-hand side and hopefully more to the center, then this camera is gonna pick them up. I'm gonna put another camera between the fence and that camera. And that one's gonna face straight ahead. So I'll put another one down here. And with that one facing straight ahead, if the deer come down on the right-hand side, they're hopefully, fingers crossed, gonna hit one of these cameras, either the one here between the fence and the other camera or the one in the middle. The moral of this is to observe wildlife, understand the behavior before you start filming. If you can do that, you're gonna get far better shots straight off the bat than if you didn't do any observations whatsoever. And in some cases we can't, we get to an area and we have to start filming straight away. But as time goes on and we see more of the animal's movements, it starts to make more sense as to how uh, you know, we, can, we can film to get the best shots. But in this case, we're gonna give this a go. The nice thing is I'm out here for a few days so I can adapt every day. As I see whether it's working or not, I can make changes, move the cameras, um, put one up at the other end there so I can film them coming over the ridge and, and walking down past the camera. And so I'm gonna try out a few things and uh, hopefully this is gonna work and we'll be able to show you some nice deer footage. I've just collected the cameras and I've had a look on these GoPro 5s just using the app on my phone and I've got some fantastic footage. The deer 
did exactly as I thought. They walked down on the right hand side and they walked straight up, straight up past the first camera that was facing the other way. They walked over the top of it, even kicked it as they went by. And then they walked straight up to the second camera that was facing them and walked over the top and even came back and kicked that one too. So to sum up, there's no way I would have got that footage had I not observed for a few days, worked out where they were, they were walking, looked at their tracks to work out where to place these things. And I got the best possible footage I could them actually walking over the top of the camera. So it worked out really, really well. Uh, it's gonna go into the show perfectly and uh, really pleased I could share this with you. And so until next time, grab your gear, get outside and make it happen.